welcome to our Borneo adventure and if you're just tuning in, let me quickly bring you up to speed. I touched down in Kota Kinabalu, nestled in the Malaysian province of Sabah, right here in northern Borneo. And my journey began with savouring the delectable seafood and renting an affordable scooter for an epic adventure towards the northern tip of Borneo. However, Mother Nature had other plans, steering us into the mountainous terrain of the more central regions where we delved into the lush rainforests and experienced the captivating way of life in the Mali Mali villages. But now we find ourselves on the east coast and we are on a quest to discover its renowned wildlife and in today's video and in the next few we'll be exploring the Sipilok region and its wildlife reserves before venturing deeper in search of its larger than life creatures. So sit down, relax, subscribe if you're new and let's pick things up in Sandakan on the east coast of Borneo. Hello. Oh, what's this one? Coconut. Coconut. That looks yummy. Can I get one coconut, please? That looks delicious. How much is that? Three ringgit. Okie dokie. Ah, oh, the plastic bag is overkill, dude. I mean, it's already enough plastic. Thanks. No, no bag, no bag. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome back, guys. So in the last video, I got on the bike and I drove 250 kilometers or so to here. This is Sandakan and it's right next to another place called Sipilok, which is where most of this video is going to be based because this is where there is the Sipilok Nature Reserve, which is like a big area of rainforest where they have some really interesting and authentic Borneo experiences this is where you can see pygmy elephants this is where you can see orangutans and special types of monkeys and beautiful birds this is the part of Borneo that I've been looking forward to coming to so yesterday I just took it easy and stayed in the hotel I checked into a place called the Livingston five hour drive today through Borneo through dirty dusty broken roads but we made it comfortable place comfortable bed and a new base for the next four days. Everyone on Instagram recommended me to stay in Sippy Lock, guys, but uh, it was full. And the hotels in this town weren't great. So I, I'm staying in the best I could find, basically. So let's begin by going to the first of, I think, three locations in today's video. So enjoy another episode here on our Borneo road trip. <laughs> Yeah, I've been having a great time in Borneo so far, but today really feels like the first time that we're in the rainforest and kind of the reason I came here was to discover the rainforest and where better to get our first glimpse than here. This is the Rainforest Discovery Center and it's a protected area of virgin rainforest with human man-made trails that walk through it and on the ground as well as on the canopy walk. And they've got this suspension bridge to cross the lake here and it's a place where you can quietly observe and bird watch and look for monkeys orangutans maybe and this is a wild rainforest preserved area that has mm, ways in which you can just walk around safely quietly and enjoy being in the Borneo rainforest and as you see the information when you walk into the discovery center a large proportion of Borneo's rainforest has been cleared for palm oil and according to the sign 48% of the land and the rainforest remains which is a positive I suppose 
that they're not trying to, you know, destroy it anymore. And that hopefully it will come back. Uh, one thing I will say is I've come early. This is 8.30 in the morning and I'm sweating and I've only been here two minutes. It's so humid. I mean, already I'm seeing something I've never seen before. This plant growing out of this tree must be a seed or a flower almost ready to sprout into action. I'm not quite sure. Beautiful thing. It's got this weird jelly, this translucent jelly coming out of the tip and out of the sides. I have no idea what that is. Never seen that before. And I feel like I'm going to be saying that quite a bit here because we're in the Borneo rainforest. While this plant is rare in temperate forests, Coliflori is a very common tropical rainforest plant and often found on understory trees. Very cool. Very unique. I'm hoping to see at least one species of the hornbill. According to that sign, there's four or five, maybe six different species that live in this area. Now, my wide angle lens on my main camera won't capture it very well, but I did bring my phone, which has got a very good zoom feature. So I'm gonna keep quiet. There are people who are paying good money to come here, especially people with really expensive bird watching camera lenses, and they're trying to find nice pictures. And you know, there's a few people walking around, and everyone's trying to be quiet and be still. And there's a bloke with a leaf blower. causing an absolute racket. Zero chance of seeing any animals if you're anywhere near him because everyone's scared and runs away. It's so loud. I mean, you're blowing leaves off a, off a, a jungle park. Like I, can, I understand maybe you want to keep the park nice and tidy and maybe you do need to blow leaves once a week or once a day. If you really have to do it, do it before you open or after you've closed. I'm speechless. Sometimes the world and sometimes humanity renders you speechless. <laughs> Honestly, I couldn't believe what they were doing. I mean, in their defense, it was practically opening time. I was one of the first people in the door. So maybe they were just trying to tidy up before they opened and he was running a bit late. But anyway, I just wanted to share that little moment with you. And then I continued for about an hour. There were a few times where there were some stairs leading up to a bird watching tower where I enjoyed waiting and seeing and praying to see some of the hornbills. The one thing you have to be when you're bird watching is patient and quiet. Two things I'm not very good at. <laughs> there is a map when you arrive at the front, but they also give you a paper version, which is very handy because the paths and the turns in the forest itself, especially on the ground, become quite complicated. But to be honest, getting lost in this rainforest reserve was so much fun and I kept finding beautiful little quiet spots far away from any leaf blowers and again had my fingers and toes crossed that I would see something cool. This is this is more like it. So there's this little waterfall here on the side of the trail. And there's a little picnic table. And this is just off a trail called Kingfisher Trail. So I'm sure they have kingfishers here. Actually, I saw a sign earlier. Many different species live here. 
So I'm just going to sit here patiently and see if one comes down to hunt. There are little fish in the water. I mean, the chances of it happening on camera are a million to one. But you know what's the most beautiful thing that I've seen so far is the way that the light is reflecting off the river, up into the trees, onto the bark and onto the leaves. And it's flickering. That's just so beautiful. Within the reserve are two ginormous species of trees, two of some of the tallest in the world. And so I set off to hunt down the location of one of them and even just walking around trying to find this tree using the map and getting a little bit lost. I was having so much fun. I really recommend you come here, especially early in the morning. If you are in the marketplace for a VPN, I really recommend the one that I've been using for the last two years, and that is, of course, NordVPN. NordVPN lets me search the web and enjoy content regardless of where I'm located. And to be honest, much more important, it gives me peace of mind when it comes to online security wherever I am. Just knowing with a simple click of the button that my IP address is encrypted and that my identity is protected is so important for me, especially because I'm always connecting to public Wi-Fi zones, which of course is where a lot of cyber criminals operate from. This happens a lot, but the other day I was searching for a movie on Netflix. Me and my girlfriend wanted to watch something in particular. We couldn't find it, but with a simple click of a button on NordVPN, we switched our location. This kind of thing happens all the time, no matter where I am. It seems like something pops up in my head, like, oh, I should watch this or continue watching this series. And then because I'm in a new country, it's just not there. But with NordVPN, change my location and uh, <laughs> it's there again. NordVPN secures your connection, keeps your online activity private, and keeps your sensitive information extremely safe. If you're in the marketplace for a VPN that you can trust, now is the time because NordVPN have a fantastic discount exclusive for everybody here on this channel. Every purchase of a two-year plan, you will receive four bonus months on top. Make sure to use the link in the description to enjoy that exclusive discount and join me and millions of other people over at NordVPN. Search the web in freedom and with secure access. And uh, I want to get back to Borneo now because I've got a very special tree that I want to share with you. So I'm on the trail to the giant tree, the tallest tree in Sipi Lok, apparently. And believe it or not, this tree is not the tree. It's just a small one on the way. the largest tree I've ever seen. And they measured it six years ago at 94 meters, 94.1 meters, which makes it one meter taller than the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, this tree was just absolutely incredible. It was it was like the home tree from the Avatar movie, if you've ever seen it. Absolutely draw-dropping. A little bit later, back on the main trail, I found the walkway up into the canopy walk, and this was a really pleasant surprise because earlier in the series, we did another canopy walk on a very rickety, narrow, and <laughs> frightening wooden floorboard thing. <laughs> 60 meters up in the sky, very scary. This was solid, made of metal, very wide, and gave you a very beautiful, uninterrupted view of not the highest part of the canopy, but, you know, still very high up. It's a great place to just find a bit of shade and wait for passers-by, such as hornbills, monkeys, flying squirrels. There's a whole host of species that live here. And I can already see 
it's not it's not a hornbill it looks like a like a hawk or a or a baby eagle <laughs> He's looking around for something. I wonder what they eat because it must be difficult to catch mice and rabbits. He probably eats lizards, snakes, and what else he can find, other birds I'm sure. So yeah, I'd had a great three hours here. I really enjoyed it and seeing the eagle and a few of the other species was, yeah, it was very special. And I had a little bit of lunch and a delicious carrot juice at the restaurant before getting back on the bike and heading to our next destination of the Orangutan Rehab Center just up the road. Yeah, this rehab center in Sipilok is a vital sanctuary dedicated to the rehab and conservation of orangutans, which are sadly one of the world's most endangered species. This particular center plays a crucial role in providing a safe environment for orphaned and injured and even some rescued orangutans who have been kept as pets. And yeah, you could instantly tell that the preservation and conservation of the orangutans is the sole priority here. This is not a zoo, this is a rehab center and the rainforest is all around. They're free to come and free to go. And well, let me explain a little bit more here on the ground. Okie dokie, so they have signs when you arrive saying it's not guaranteed. You might see a lot, you might see one or you might see none and at the outdoor nursery there must have been a dozen of them and what was really nice was a big female came in from the jungle on a rope and joined the little ones and they were just enjoying their lunch and so this is an outdoor nursery so they are able to venture and go out into the wild but they're not fully released and I'm not sure how they would control them in here I don't know what keeps them in the rehab center. It's not like there's a fence. And yeah, this is a nice experience. It's nice to see the orangutan, especially the one that was out here with mother. Hopefully at the feeding that's about to happen, we'll see some bigger ones because this is now in the deep part of the rainforest in the, in the center of the rehab center itself. Yeah, deep within the sanctuary, twice a day, there is a feeding platform. Someone will come along and place down bananas, a coconut, and a bunch of fruit. Now, they obviously do this for two reasons. The first being it attracts some of the hungrier orangutans who are still learning how to adapt to the wild to come down and feed and for everyone to enjoy the view. And the second reason is because some of these orangutans who've been rescued and have gone through the nursery still haven't yet fully learned how to get everything they need from the jungle. So a nice feed twice a day guarantees that they're getting something nutritious in their system. They actually are happier when the orangutans don't come <laughs> because that's a good sign that the rehab is working and that they've found their own food and they've built their own bed for the night and they're just being orangutans. There's also a proper nursery sort of viewing area. There's a room with aircon, a room without aircon, and it overlooks, again, like a playground. Um, it looks a little bit like a zoo in this area, but again, the forest is all around. They're free to come and go. These cute little orangutans have been rescued, whether they've been found, abandoned by their parents, or, you know, some of them have been rescued as pets, sadly they still haven't got the skills to take care of themselves so they normally hang around here and you, you're guaranteed to see the little ones here at the uh, open nursery it's only when you venture onto the walkways and to watch the viewing platform the feeding platform i should say that you're opening yourself up to seeing the bigger ones but obviously like i said it's not guaranteed so yeah seeing orangutans in borneo Finally, <laughs> it was uh, yeah, it was an incredible experience, and I headed back towards town 
to wrap up this episode. We're back at the Sandakan waterfront, which is where we began the video and where we're going to end. There's a nice little waterfront here with some <laughs> little food vans, little food trucks and a little seating area where you can enjoy food and watch the sunset, I would imagine. There's this god-awful ugly mall, huge monstrosity right on the water's edge here, which is a shame. Uh, and it's not really like a beachy vibe, uh, unfortunately. But uh, that's okay. There's still a nice atmosphere and there's kids playing and everyone's having a nice little evening dinner with their family. Nowhere along here sells alcohol, um, but I think that's very Malaysian. The only alcohol I've found is in 7-Eleven. So we'll get a couple of cans. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video. It's quite a straightforward one, really. Just exploring Sipi Lock. It's a shame we didn't get to see the big orangutan come out and play. That would have been really nice. But like I said at the beginning of the video, this is just a little exploration vlog. Tomorrow, I'm getting picked up at uh, 6 o'clock in the morning to go on a three-day, two-night jungle, safari, river expedition experience. All of the things that I really want to see on this trip will be ticked off in our three-day jungle experience. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying this series. I'm having fun. It's really a laid-back place, Borneo. And uh, yeah, I'll take you to somewhere really special in the next one. <laughs>